we'll set d equal zero and we'll calculate what this looks like first. with no p's will be the one which involves p0 squared, this will be minus p squared over p0 squared. And then the terms which are proportional to p, there is one from here. is 
see is this. I split it up like that. If I don't do it like this, I'm going to carry these constants and I'm bound to drop something. So if I write my result in this form, it's easier to calculate. So I have the exponent. First, I'm going to write it minus a b squared plus b over a b plus c. Now, the part with c doesn't matter because it will just factor out in front because it has no integration. So, this is the part that doesn't really need I just need to keep and make sure that these are the two pieces that we just And I'm going to complete the square here. So I'm going to write minus 8 b e squared plus 2 b over 2 a So to complete the square, last piece which I cannot forget. So this is minus 8 and it's multiplying this. So this becomes minus a p minus b over 2a squared minus and minus give you plus. So this is b squared over 4 a. I have a squared down here multiplying the same becomes just 1 over a. So if I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be able to finish this today. But just for a future I mean a squared over 2 is right. C is minus a squared times zero squared over two, and b is a squared times zero minus i x over two. Is this correct? Identification. Can you please check?
Now I have e to the c. And then after completion of the square, I will still have this piece which will come out because it has no variable. So then I will have additional piece which is plus b squared. How do we calculate this integral here? Well, first we shift the variable. So we define z is p minus b over 2a. So this integral then becomes integral of the minus infinity to plus infinity dz e to the minus a z squared. It's easy, right? And then we define a new variable which is square root of a times e. So this integral we can't integral from minus infinity to plus infinity instead of dz. So we have dy, 1 over square root of a, e to the minus y squared. So this is square root of y. This is a wave function at time t equals zero. And notice that this wave function is a Gaussian. stop here and then we'll finish this next time. We still need to evaluate this big function.
later times, in other words, carry out the time evolution. You should you do the computation all by yourself. It's not really nice. What we will actually learn is that this represents the particle which travels with velocity v, which is p over n. So it's moving along the straight line with this velocity. And it's spreading out the two? Just a different manner. Regardless of whether it's spreading out or not, this represents the particle which travels with this velocity. Um, are the uh, lectures going to be posted online? Uh, I'm doing my best. I haven't had the time. I have movie clips. I haven't had the time to upload them. So, you want to do it for me? I will give you movie clips. Okay. Because movie clips needs to be converted. I've never.